Today's Tuesday, April 9th. Here's a little piece of what's coming up on the mayor's office. It's a joy to watch Ellie De La Cruz hit a ball 450 feet, then get it inside the park home run, then beat out an infield single and play elite defense. Like, it's fun, man. It's fun if you're a baseball fan, if you're a Cincinnati Reds fan right now, you're looking at that team and you're looking at him going, let's go. Our future looks yep. bright in Cincinnati. And I'm in love with this good life. Can't give it up. Make it to the top. Keep climbing. I want to live it up. The good life. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. The good life. Good life. Oh, good life. 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 Good how are you doing, brother? We're doing good, bro. You're uh, you're in my neck of the woods these days. I saw you uh, had a nice night last night with a couple of folks. What's going on? Oh, man. I went back to the Bronx last night, dude. It was really, really good to be back there, man. Uh, Booney left me some tickets, uh, which was great. Very thankful for that. And it was in the Legends Legends Club, which, dude, that place is incredible. Have you ever been to the Legends Club? Like, I didn't want to leave because I just wanted to keep eating like <laughs> the old crabs and prime rib and sushi. And I'm like, this is this is unbelievable. Like ice cream. It was just incredible. So I went with Brian Kenny and Sarah and uh and some of uh Brian's family was in from County Mayo, Ireland, legitimately Ooh. to see uh, I believe uh Irish football uh was in oh, the Bronx okay. on was in the Bronx on Sunday. Yeah, his family is straight. His family is like straight out of one of those like pictures you see of Ireland, dude. They're like they're in dude, it. rural Ireland. I mean, like yes, out in the sticks, Ireland. Wait, I got a super quick story about him. So there's this place in Montauk. It used to be called uh, Kenny's Tipperary Inn, like right out there, like way on the back end of Montauk by this place called Gosman's Dock, where like really where the the shipper the ship guys are from, like where like the jaw like the captain from Jaws, like loosely based off of some of those guys out there there's a place kenny's tipperary in and it was like this irish like shack looking place but it was a nice restaurant like a pub place and i was sitting across from bk at, at work one one day and he's like oh yeah that's just like uh kenny's tipperary and back in the day and i go kenny's tipperary in i go best the best bay clams in the history of the world and he goes what he goes, how do you know about Kenny's Tipperary Inn? I'm like, dude, I'm from Long Island. I'm like, when we would go on vacation, we would go to Kenny's Tipperary Inn for these baked clams. They were huge and stuffed. He goes, right. that's my family's. What? My family owns that place. I was like, what? You're Kenny? I always thought it was Kenny something. So oh, was, that's Kenny. Kenny. No way. Tipperary Inn. I'm like, I, I told him, I'm like, dude, those are the best baked clams in the history of the world. He goes, we were known for them. I'm like, of course you were. I'm like, two, twice, we would go out there twice every summer. My dad would go and he'd be like, this is my vacation, not yours. Like, no way. Like, you're eating the clam. Like, yeah. And we would go there at least once every time, uh, twice a year. And we would go to Kenny Superior and, and it was the Brian Kenny family owned this. Oh, that's incredible, dude. That's incredible. Well, BK's dad directly off the boat in Ireland. He told me a really a good story really quick. He said when his dad was like getting accustomed to America, the reason he loved baseball was he was like he thought it was American. Like if you're in America, you got to love America's pastime. You got to huh? become a baseball fan. So his dad, he said his dad was coaching him 12-year-old baseball. His dad had no idea what he's doing, but he's like I got to learn I got to learn this game because we're in America and you got to love baseball if you're in America. So I think that's so cool. And think about Brian Kenny's Think about Brian Kenny's life. You know what I mean? Like he has, he's the, he, you know, he's the the guy that does all MCs, the Cooperstown Hall of Fame every year. All the stuff he does for the network, MLB Now, all the stuff. He's a historian. All because his dad came over from Ireland and all of a sudden was like, we got to be baseball fans. Because if you're in America, you are true Americans are baseball fans. I just think, well, he told me that story last night. I thought it was so cool. That's a really great story. That's a great story. Yeah. Great guy. I know not everybody loves analytics, folks, but BK's a good guy, folks. He's great. BK's great, man. And and yeah. dude, I, and I also think BK loving the analytics and doing what he's doing, I mean, has helped the game too because <laughs> it helps people get inside of what they're looking at in the in the clubhouse. I agree. I agree. Now, um, all right. So wait, we did a poll question. 
I put four things on this poll question this morning, and we got we got tons of responses. Hold on, we're on tons, hundreds and hundreds of responses just in this short time. Love uh, it. I'm going to give you the four things, but we're going to we're going to start with the Yankees, no matter what, because you were just there. But here's what I, I said: What was the coolest thing that happened in MLB last night? We got Ellie's inside the park homer. We got the Padres' epic comeback, came back from, from eight down. And I wrote Soto Soto slash Volpe's Bronx Bombs. And then the Mets' big bats beat Braves. Say that. Can you say that quick? Mets, Mets bat, big bats beat Braves. Yeah, there you go. Um, it was a runaway. I'll, I'll say that first. It was a runaway, pun intended, Ellie, 82.4%. Well, dude, let's talk about that first then, bro. Well, okay, good. Is that okay. what the fans want? They want to talk Ellie? Let's talk Ellie. All right, okay. Hey, listen, man. I'll tell you what, when I threw the first pitch out the other day uh, for opening day for the Reds, you know, I was in the dugout saying hi to Dave Bell and those, some of those guys, you know, Fraley, some of the guys I know, Freddie Benavidez. Ellie De La Cruz came out and he was putting his helmet up. And so I was like, hey, what's up, Ellie? I was like, big number, man, 44. You know, Eric Davis, Adam Dunn, you know, some great players have worn 44. And he was like, the legends. Like, he said something like, the Giants. I go, yeah, the Giants. I go, dude. Talk about the Giants, this guy's huge. Had no idea how big he is. Not only is he fast, I mean, he's tall and lean, but he's he's pretty big dude. So being next to him, I'm like, wow. And I was thinking to myself, to be that tall and, and, and pretty jacked and to be able to run the way he does. I mean, obviously his strides are incredible. But I think one thing with Ellie De La Cruz, dude, there's certain people in this game when you watch them run, you're like, man, hit one in the gap because I want to watch you run. I remember Jacoby Ellsbury like, was like that. Deion Sanders was like that. Guys that I played with, I'm like, man, I hope they hit a ball in the gap because I want to watch them run. It's the thing of beauty. So when Ellie hit that ball yesterday, dead center, and the center fielder laid out, made that diving play, and then he missed it. Dude, did you see the crowd come to their feet? Uh -huh. The crowd just came to their feet because we all thought, oh, here we go, baby. Like, this is the guy you want to see run wide open. And when Ellie rounded first and, and he was on a, on a roll, man, it, it looked like it literally looked like Usain Bolt coming <laughs> around those bases. It looked, like, it looked like three strides in between the bases before he scored, dude. And he scored it. And he scored easily. Yeah. That's how fast he is. There wasn't 14 seconds around the base or something ridiculous. He was flying. Yeah. yeah. And he wasn't even like that wasn't like he wasn't like in full sprint mode from the beginning. He he did that with like he wasn't coasting, but he was motoring. If you notice when he turned first of all, he turned third base. The the fact again to be that big and to be able to cut corners that that well is not easy either. When he turned when he rounded third base, he put like a little extra gear on. That's the other thing you see with like the super fast guys. They're so yeah. fast. You there's see another gear. Too. Yeah. In football, somebody has an angle and then all of a sudden there's that second, that second <laughs> burst. That's a, something I'm very jealous of. It's pretty awesome. But dude, not only that, he hit a bomb to Adam Dunn territory before. The, and he beat out a grounder to third, score, stole third, scored the first run of the game. The guy's electric. I don't care what anybody says. The guy is as electric a baseball player as there is in a game. No, right. dude. I mean, I'm telling you, when you look at the game and you look at what Ronald Acuna did last year and you, and you see 40, 70, you're like 40, 70, 40 stolen bases or 40 home runs and 70 stolen bases. And then you start to look at the body of work of who are some guys that might be able to do that. And like you think. Bobby Wood Jr. is maybe one of them. And then you think Ellie De La Cruz. Mm. Ellie De La Cruz has the speed to steal 70 bags and has the power to hit 40 home runs. There's not many dudes in the league that have the chance to do it, let alone the, you know, the abilities to do it. So, I mean, and I think he's only going to get better, man. I just, I really believe it. You can't teach experience in the big leagues. The more you play, the more you're out there, the more you understand how these pitchers are trying to pitch you, the more you face guys over and over, the better you're going to get. And uh, like I said, it's a joy to watch Ellie De La Cruz hit a ball 450 feet, then get it inside the park home run, then beat out an infield single and play elite defense. Like, it's fun, man. It's fun. If you're a baseball fan, if you're a Cincinnati Reds fan right now, you're looking at that team and you're looking at him going, let's go. Our future looks yep. bright in Cincinnati. Yeah, very cool. And you just said a perfect segue. You can't teach experience. 
one guy that got experience last year, which, by the way, we can't undercut the fact that this guy was had a bunch of stolen bases. He was, he was a gold glover, but you got his front row seat to your little brother, uh, yeah. Anthony Volpe, last night, dude. Unbelievable. Dude, this guy, you know, you, you talk about a guy that's more prepared than anybody in the game, and he loves baseball. I don't even know he thinks – I don't even realize – he doesn't realize he's getting paid. He's one of those guys like, I just want to do so well. You know, I'm still up early. Take the million ground balls before. You know, you watch him play defense. Like, man, is he good? Yeah, he works at it. Every day he's out there early taking grounders. And, you know, if some guys are going through the motions. Like, Volpe is, like, playing through the ball on the run. Like, every every rep he takes is with intention, right? In the cages, his routines, everything he does, he, um, and his process at the plate. It's just, like you said, you can't teach experience. It makes me think of Jackson Holiday, dude. They send down Jackson Holiday, whatever, to start the clock later. They need him now, man. Let, 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 let's, let's stop with that stuff and let get him up here. Good for the Yankees and Brian Cashman last year saying, you know what? Anthony Volpe's made this team out of spring. We're bringing him day one, and we're starting the clock. Now, listen, at the end of the day, Chinch, that experience Volpe had last year in the big leagues for that year, the ups and the downs and the – and you know, you know, I think the struggles taught him more than more than anything. You know, he's never hit two, two hundred five, two ten in his life. So it taught him, okay, what adjustments do I need to make? How do I adjust back? And the great players in this game, dude, make the adjustments. You're looking at Volpe through the first eleven games this season. You're going, wow, he, this guy's made some adjustments. His swing's a little more flat. He's driving the ball the other way. He's not swinging and missing at so many pitches. He's not swinging uphill, right? And and then. The biggest thing, too, is when you start to cover the other side of the field, Chinch, like when he drives the ball the other way, noticed last night on his three-run home run was a, was, a, was a slider or was a curveball, you know, out over the plate that he drove the left. And I always say, I remember talking to Miguel Cabrera last year about hitting, and he, the best hitters say, I take the fastball middle away, the other way, and anything with spin on it with that path, ends up going for a home run the other way. And you saw Juan Soto do it, do it last night, too. He got a fastball down the middle, 96. He shoots it down the left field line, right, opposite the field. Comes up later, gets a changeup, 87, and shoots it to right for, for a three-run bomb. Yep. So the best hitters, man, are really using both lines and using that other way to their advantage. And when you watch Volpe, that's what he's really doing this season that's been so impressive. And, and, and another thing, Chinch, he made two plays last night that other oh, people sick. aren't making. You know, up the sick. middle to his left, and then he made that play to his right that always like, well, can Volpe make the play to his right? Yes, dude. Makes the one-hop pick, slide, comes up, bam, and makes the throw, gets the guy by like seven feet. You know, so yeah. he's got yeah. a good arm, better arm than you think, right. and his feet are just incredible out there. Yeah, I sent you this yesterday, but I'll read it out loud to the fans. This was entering play yesterday. Last season, Volpe pulled the ball in 45.6% of his at-bats when the ball was in play. It is 26.9 this year, comparatively. 20% less. That's entering play yesterday. And, dude, he's leading the major leagues in hitting. He's tied with somebody right now. Hold on. I think he's number one in war, too. He's number one in war. Him and Arcia are both hitting 417, dude, and that's not like – a couple days, dude. That's we got. We got about a week and yeah. a half. We got some some at bats under. Yeah, he's got fifty. He's got fifty at bats under his belt. Not like yeah. five. Yeah, four seventeen, dude. And it doesn't look like any signs of slowing down because, like you said, he's not trying. He, he what? He did not try to hit that home run last night. He didn't try. No, to hit that home run. not even close. Like you said, that that's the bat path, dude. If you get your bat path correct to right, it it, it shows up to left, perfect because it's it's in the zone longer. Right, it drops in. You're riding that, and it's that little lag of your bat, and and all of a sudden, your eyes are on it, and and then you're just a little through it, and you catch it a little out front, and that's your launch angle. You know, people people are trying to generate launch angle. Launch angle is where you catch the ball. So if you have the right bat path and you catch the ball a little out front, it's going to go up. The ball is going to go up on that angle. So that that's how you, if if, if guys could take 600 at bats with that approach and not waste a pitch, you'd see some bigger numbers in the league. Yeah. Oh, well, it's really great to see. It's it's fun over there. Uh, it was not fun in uh, on the other side of town in Queens for the Mets in the beginning of the season. Everybody's worried. The fans here are absolutely bonkers. Four of five, dude. 
and they just went into Hotlanta and battled. And I got to give credit to your, your buddy, Carlos Mendoza came into that game yesterday. You know, they have been struggling. They, they're on a nice little streak. He was dead set. I cannot pitch some of my relievers because I've been destroying them. Plus, they had the rainouts and all that. So he's like, these are the guys that are playing in this game. These are the pitchers that I have. And the offense stepped up. Brandon Nimmo stepped up. But yeah. he did not waver. He didn't get scared. Not that he's ever going to get scared. But, like, he didn't, like, think, maybe I should bring Diaz in. Maybe I should bring Diaz in. No. He stuck with his guns, and they wound up hanging hanging on for that big win. And now they've won four or five. Yeah, I think the biggest thing changed is Carlos Mendoza. He's managing the minors. He's been a bench coach in the big leagues. He's been around long enough. You know it's a marathon, not a sprint. So these guys know, man, like, I just can't. We as fans go, how come you're not bringing a Diaz? Dude, he's got the heartbeat of the of that of that um of that team, knowing that like I got 162 here. Like I can't keep running the same guys out every night. And you also have to steal guys in the bullpen or other guys that you believe in them too. It's a long year. We're gonna need everybody. So you gotta lean on some of those guys too. So, you know, great job for Mendoza, making sure that he was having the right matchups. And you know, that's a that's a huge win for them, man. Huge win. Yeah, and don't and here's another thing. <clears throat> Talk about you know your first year with the team. You you're learning these guys. They obviously have faith in them. Uh, he moved Nimmo to left field. He put uh, um, McNeil in the outfield yesterday because they have to make some like roster moves, whatever. And he, I, I heard his press conference before. He was like, "I talked to the guys. They bought in. They were all in. I appreciate them as as players." But like, you're this early in the season. You're like, "Hey, I'm moving you guys around a little bit." And for them to trust him. Whatever, whatever it takes, Skip, let's win some games. That's good for the Mets. Good sign for the Mets after a really rough start to the season. Yeah. Great sign, dude. Great, great yeah. sign for the Mets. And good to see, like, Nimmo and some of these bat Lindor, some of these bats getting going, too. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you saw it. I mean, Nimmo hit some bombs yesterday. Um, All right, let's move on again. This finished second in our poll. The Padres' epic comeback with uh, exclamation point when Tatis is bombed towards the end of the, the night. Dude, when you go down 8 nothing, that's a – that's a big one to come back from. But I tell you what, when you go down 8 nothing early, I've seen it so many times, you know, you start kind of maybe relax a little bit, and all of a sudden there's there's one run, there's two runs, you know. Obviously, the, the Padres put up seven in the sixth. Mm -hmm. I think they put up seven in the sixth or the seventh. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, Cronenworth gets it started. Bogey hits a two-run bomb. Got a couple guys on. Uh, sack fly in there, too, like, they put up seven runs, and then they just – and then Tatis obviously goes deep, and nothing better than a Don or Silo call, bro, when – when uh, when, uh, you know, he's like, oh, it's Tatis. He's the, yeah. I was with Don in Boston in 08, just a great guy. I've done some games with him, too, in the booth. So I love his calls when guys come up with big home runs. So, yeah, what a, what a game for the Padres, and uh, what a confidence booster, you know, for those guys. And, and, all, and on the flip side, that's a tough one to lose for the Cubs. Mm -hmm. you know, never want to be up eight nothing and, and and lose nine eight. That's a that's a that's a tough one. Yeah, no, that was that was a tough one. Um, wait, there was one more I had on here. What I forget here. Um, no, that's how I covered everything right there. That's the four in our thing. So again, Ellie's inside the Parker got eighty two point eight percent of the vote. Padres got seven point nine. Soto and Volpe got six point four, and the Mets got three percent. No love for the Mets last night. Wow, wow, <laughs> but, wow, dude, Ellie, hey, hey listen. We're going to see a lot more L.A. De La Cruz, bro. That's impressive. impressive. Yeah, it's impressive. I love all the young guys. I love what's going on. What we haven't even talked about, Mike Trout hit his fifth homer. He's also leading the major leagues. Dude, I was just going to say, let's not forget about Mike Trout. Oh, by the way, he's still uh, maybe the best player in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And kind of almost like a little, like he doesn't play like looking like he has an edge, but hey. You lose Otani, everybody's like, oh, Trout, he's not one of the big guys anymore. Kind of feels like he has a little bit of an edge, dude. He has got, he's hitting bombs left left and right all over the place. Hold on, I think I got, I found a stat. Oh, projections right now. He's projected for, uh, it's very early this season, but he's project, projected for 81 home runs. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> he's hit five home runs in 10 games. He's hitting a home run every other game, which is incredible. Awesome. And by the way, just slide this in there. Shohei Otani has had multi-hit games in five straight games now. First time in his career, which I was a little surprised. I thought he would have more than, but pretty cool, huh? That's incredible. You know, you just think about how good Betts and Freeman are, and then you, you know, Otani's just in, you know, in that lineup too. It's just yeah. phenomenal.
Yeah, we got we're off to a great start this season, man. You just got a fresh yeah. too. We gotta get your boy on who who cuts. Yeah, right. we gotta get Davey cuts on, man. He got me a custom cut today, you know. He does yeah. the Knicks, Giants, and the Yankees. Guys all over the place, all over New York, man. Yeah, and he's got a great personal story though. Don't even bring it up now. It's a great yeah, story. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll get him on. Next. We'll yeah. get him on. Yeah. yeah. He'll have some good I stuff. I want to talk a little Jalen Brunson with him too about some Knicks. Yeah, oh dude. Brunson. Oh, dude, he cuts he cuts Brunson's hair. <sighs> so cool. What a gig, man. <laughs> Think about it when you're growing up, like, oh, maybe I'll cut hair for a living. And now you're like, yeah, he's a celebrity. Yeah. He's about as big a celebrity as those yeah. guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. All right. You're getting after it today. What show do you on? All right, man. Yeah, I'm doing MLB tonight with Dempster. We got a little, you know, a little breakdown. Oh, cool. little break- yeah, we got some breakdowns. I think some Yankee stuff, maybe some LA, LA Dela Cruz. I'm looking at Spencer Steer, too, and I'll play of the week. I mean, raking, too. So, the, you know, the, the, the Reds uh, have, uh, have some guys come out the gates hot. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Okay. Fun stuff. And we're going to keep moving. And, oh, by the way, you're on McAfee today in case. Anybody... Oh, yeah. Pat McAfee. One, one o'clock today. One ten. Yeah. One o'clock. Hey, tell everybody on McAfee show to like and subscribe to our show. Tell yeah, them I will. I, I, I will. Dude. I will. Also, too, I'm on Seth Myers tomorrow night, too. I got I got a lot of action. I got a lot of action. You were like you were on Seth Myers. You do Seth. You've done it since the beginning of the network. You and Millar used to. Yeah, who, this is the who, this will be my eighth time on Seth Myers. <laughs> That's so crazy. So dude. so funny. Do you know so he funny. might? There's very. It's very close. So at some point, um, what's his name has got to retire. Lauren Michaels. At some oh, yeah. Point in his life, he's got to retire from doing Saturday Night Live. And Seth might take over. Seth, the the three big names are Seth. Tina Fey and uh who's the guy? Oh my god, Keenan Tom Thompson. Oh yeah, dude, it's they me. would be awesome. They would be awesome. Well, that was one uh, such a big writer for them for years. And Tina yeah, Fey. I didn't realize he was almost like like he was almost like you know, like a step down. Him and Tina Fey like yeah. pretty yeah. much dominated with him. So hopefully, yeah. oh man, imagine he gets the Lauren Michaels job and you're boys with him and you do his you've been doing oh. his we're going, dude. Right. Those are tough tickets to get. That's a tough <laughs> ticket to get. It's a very tough. <laughs> tough nice. Ticket. All right. Well, have a great day today, everybody. Have a great day. Baseball's going strong. We yes. need likes and subscribes. We're, you guys did a good job yesterday. I think we we kind of scolded everybody to get some more subscribers. We got some more. We need to keep right. moving. We need like right. keep, keep keep moving. Keep telling your friends, your family. Don't forget Sean Casey signed Yankees jersey. Let's go. With Mantle. Mantle and Jeter's number 72 together. Let's go. 4,000 subscribers. Let's keep pushing the envelope, guys. Subscribe, download. Thanks, brother. Hey, kids, you have a great day, man. Everyone out there, thanks for listening to the mayor's office. Catch everybody tomorrow.